Hello, my name is Ethan McDonald, and today I'm talking to you about Ecclesiastical Heraldry, which I entitled The Other Half of Heraldry. So, if you have seen Ecclesiastical Heraldry, you've probably noticed the major thing, or the major theme in all of them, which is fun little hats with cords on them, or tassels. Um, in most Catholic, Lutheran, and Anglican forms of heraldry, the galero is the standard hat of choice, which is shown here on this chart with several different forms per rank. And I'm going to be explaining these ranks and some of the more common styles, not so much the more rare ones today. And some other things such as diocesan arms, individual bishops' arms, arms of individual parish churches, that sort of thing. So the common thread, no matter what liturgical tradition, is a hat with two cords over a shield, sometimes displaying a motto below, sometimes showing religious orders behind or underneath as well. So on the left, there is an Anglican Church of Canada priest with the single galero with the two tassels. And on the right-hand side, you actually see a Presbyterian minister's arms, which still show the two tassels, but are on a Geneva cap instead of a Galero. This is to kind of show that reformed heritage there and the, Calvin, the Calvinist nature there. Um, some tassels, depending on which church or which tradition it is in, some will have plain black tassels, some will have multicolored. It really just depends on the tradition. I should note, too, I should go back and note that Deacons in a church are allowed to display the hat without any tassels, whereas people that are professed um, like friars and such in monastic orders often will display a rosary around their arms. Deacons will show a hat and then priests start tassels, so there will be one on each side, so two total. The next level up is people like deans and rectors of certain churches. This one on the left is kind of an odd example because it has two tassels like a dean, but it's for someone who's a doctor and a priest. They have some special caveats in the English uh, system, or in the Episcopal system here. So there's that. So two is normally a dean of a church or a cathedral, and then three is a canon. So that would be the priests that serve under bishops. And then this is an example of a bishop's arms. This one is a Catholic bishop over in Europe, um, showing together a total of 12 tassels, six on each side. And they usually form this sort of cascading down triangular notion to show how many tassels there are. Um, depending on their rank, the hat will be black or red. Um, it, it all depends. There's a lot of varying factors here, but red and black are usually the most common. You will also see the addition of a pastoral staff or a crozier usually added behind, sometimes a processional cross. There are so many caveats to get into of this, so I'm just going to use this as the example for today. And if you're wondering where the tassels come from, yes, they are actually allowed to display so many tassels on their hat. Here's an old picture of a bishop displaying all of, well, of a cardinal displaying all of his tassels on his galera. Now, bishops can also do certain interesting ideas with their arms. So, for example, this one here is cantling, where you have the personal arms here on the right with the crozier. You have the diocesan arms with the mitre and the pastoral staff between them. And these are the diocesan arms of a former bishop of Salt Lake City in Utah. On the right, here are the arms of an abbot. Now, abbots rank the same as bishops in the church hierarchy, but here you see the crozier in the middle, but you have the abbey arms and the individual arms together, separate but not marshaled together like the other picture. Now, these arms can often be displayed in other places. The most notable place for a bishop's arms are to be displayed is a cathedra, which is the bishop's throne. On the left, you have the Cathedral of the Diocese of Columbus, and this is in the Cathedral St. Joseph's Cathedral in Columbus, Ohio, showing the arms, the individual arms of the bishop with the diocesan arms underneath the hat with the pastoral staff behind. And on the right here is the uh, Cathedral of the Bishop of Western Michigan. Now these are more stylized than the style of a seal, where it's more natural looking than it is 
heraldic looking, but it still counts as the same. And if you notice right above, and I, I apologize for the picture being so dark, if you notice above, there is the miter with the cross and the crozier above. Now, there are some interesting things like that. There is a crowned miter that is used by the bishops of Durham. And this individual, actually, this former bishop, has the pastoral staff behind, but they also show the miter on top of a helm, which can be done, but it's often rare. And there's a special case for this, but I thought this was a really beautiful achievement. So you have the Durham and the personal arms there. Now, individual parish churches display a shield alone, sometimes with a motto, but there are no extra adamants to denote the arms of an individual parish beyond the shield itself. And it's usually displayed in a church, and here's the arms of a parish in Canada. On the right-hand side is the arms of an Episcopal cathedral. These are arms that I actually designed for the Cathedral of St. Mark in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And how you know how you know that in the Episcopal system, at least, is there will be a mitre or sometimes a mitre with a crozier and a mace. Now the mace is used in procession. It can be invocative of judicial authority, but also vergers use a mace as well. So it's kind of that mark of showing the laity and the ecclesiastical authority together. Wardens also have church wardens also carry maces. So that's how you usually denote the arms of a cathedral. Now, dioceses, cathedrals, and also bishops can display their arms purely with a mitre as well, and I will get onto that like right here. These are two different diocesan arms, and yes, this diocesan arm is impaled, but you have one on the left, one on the right, both of which are diocesan arms where they're only showing, or one's a cathedral, sorry, one's a cathedral, one's a diocese, but both of them are only showing mitres, and the mitres can be adorned in several different ways, so oftentimes individual dioceses or churches have a style of mitre they like to use for their own arms. Um, nothing is really out of the ordinary, but there's usually the traditional shape of having one laying down, one across the top, some gold trim, and two dots on the side. Now, other ways that you often see ecclesiastical heraldry is shown in a form of a medallion or seal. These are pictures of two banners I took at the Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Here you have the arms of the Episcopal Church showing a mitre with a cross key and crozier. Same here with the Diocese of Washington. Key of the key and crozier is the mark of a diocesan arm. And here they are just condensing it into a medallion. So this is the arms of the Episcopal Church, and then these are the arms of the Diocese of Washington in the Episcopal Church. Um, this is probably the most common form of ecclesiastical herald direct heraldic banner that you will see. But if you look, sometimes they will be blown up. So it is actually the arms filling up the whole banner in the form of a gone planet. Um, Robert Gare talks about that in his heraldic standard books and his disdain for banners such as these. But times change. So there's many different ways you can display a church's arms. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short little video on ecclesiastical heraldry. As always, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, we are always open to emails and comments. Thank you.